Hey, creative writers, it's uh, Professor Snar checking in. So we'll take a quick look at our due dates and I'll try to walk us through uh, some of the units coming up. Really uh, uh, getting us into our first uh, workshop here. So there's, you'll notice that these unfold over a double due date system and I'll talk about that in just a sec. So what we have just finished up then is kind of one of the fundamental um, theory units, I guess you could say. We actually do put it into practice, but I just want to review a little bit of this. So I'm going to work backwards. The writing assignment is kind of a fun one, I think. It's like a, a short, short story, basically, but it's premised on this book that was called Significant Objects, and there was a little piece on Marketplace, uh, this radio show, about the book, um, which you can find here, and if your browser's set up, it'll show up properly, but whatever. So anyway, right, the, theor the theory of the book is to take tchotchkes, basically valueless things, and have authors write short but interesting backstories for them and then sell them on eBay and so the authors or the creators of the book um, were totally forthcoming about this they didn't try to trick people and sell like magical objects whatever um, so they explained what was going on and they wanted to see how much uh, um, the the creative writing piece or the story piece could increase the value of the object which is a kind of interesting right thing some of them were still like a dollar or two dollars, but others I think they sold for like 50, 100 bucks, I don't know what they were, but considerable, like way more than the 25 cents they were originally worth. So first of all, I get that in some cases there's just the author recognition that adds value, so it's not even the story per se, so there's sort of like a the fame quotient that goes into it. But I still think it's an interesting premise that adding a story to something can actually increase its value. But it also uh, affects the kind of story that we can write for that. So we don't want to just increase its sentimental value, its individual value. It has to now be like compelling for, for anybody. Um, so it has to have some like property or long history, uh, you know, whatever. But it's a great premise to just take something physical and to write from it. And that's again why I really stressed having something that you could hold in your hand so you get the size, the texture, the 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 look of it like all around kind of that whole 3D thing rather than just an image but it is important that you post that image so we can actually see the thing um, and there's a whole bunch of uh, examples in the book itself there's one that I point you to directly here because I think it's a really good example of how the author uses kind of like little elements of the tchotchke to build the story and it becomes this really elaborate right uh, backstory for the thing. Uh, we have a pretty strict word count, right? So we had to keep it short, which is again good practice so you're not over describing. You have to be really careful about um, what words you're choosing and what words you're um, eliminating so that more words is not always better or more description doesn't produce better description. Um, often we have to take that initial writing that we do the more part and choose the words that are really evocative and get rid of the other ones because they're actually just getting in the way. So more description sometimes has the effect of making the image like uh, less compelling or cloudier <laughs> for, the, for the reader. Okay, so that was the assignment itself, which I think is kind of fun. But the theory that we were thinking about is really now the one that we want to put into practice for our uh, fiction workshop is this really basic theory of the short story. So a, a narrative theorist uh, named uh, Freytag came up with this kind of what seems like a basic idea, but he spooled it out in all kinds of other ways that we're not going to uh, spend a lot of time with. But this notion that stories fundamentally have this kind of beginning, this rising action where we learn about the context, the characters, the, the space that we're in. Most short stories have a single kind of uh, crisis point or a, a climactic moment, right? And that doesn't mean that every story has to have this over-the-top um, crisis point. So it's, things don't have to explode, someone doesn't have to die, everyone doesn't have to turn into a zombie. Those are like tricks we really want to avoid. Um, it doesn't have to always be a dream or a dream within a dream if you're like in Hollywood and now the, the single dream premise is kind of used up so now it's just, oh, how many dreams within dreams can we build? Um, so don't take this to mean that it has to be the super serious story where this super dramatic thing happens. It just means that the the moment of kind of like 
our sharpest focus has to be, you have to be aware of that as the writer. And so of course he mapped it out in this symmetrical triangle where we have exactly half the story brings us to the, rises us up to that point. We have this moment and then we have an equal kind of falling action. But what you'll see in the stories that are assigned um, or that were assigned for this unit is that that point actually moves, right? And so that's really the important part of the theory is not to duplicate the symmetrical triangle, but to be aware of these elements within your short story and to be conscious of how you manipulate them. So if you think about it, there's a lot of stories that almost begin with very little introduction or context setting. And then there's this really climatic sort of crisis moment. And then the rest of it is fallout. Right? Some of them work the other way. There's a lot of buildup, and then we have this crisis point at the end, and then it drops off really quickly, kind of leaves us hanging. And those are dangerous because sometimes it's interesting to be left hanging and wondering, and other times uh, it's just sort of lazy on the writer's part. They couldn't quite figure out how to end it, and they say things like, oh, I wanted to leave it up to the reader's imagination. Eh, that's kind of a cop-out. So, do you have to write a story that has this perfect symmetrical triangle? No, in fact, you probably shouldn't do that. But your story should have each of these component parts and you should be conscious of sort of manipulating where they happen and how they happen. So we don't, for example, want um, like just always crisis moment or always high strung drama. We don't want a whole bunch of rising action and then nothing that actually happens. We don't want no introduction and then this crisis moment and then we still don't really ever get that context or, or background filled in, so we have no idea who the characters are or what's going on or anything like that. And there's a big difference between um, uh, like successful ambiguity, right? And just like kind of lazy writing, so we have to be careful about that too. Okay, so that's the theory, and of course it's really easy to look at, right, in the picture and even to manipulate, but putting it into practice is a real challenge. So, your job is to now bring together especially this idea that we've covered here and what we've looked at in the rules of creative writing and to write a short story. So that's really the scope of the assignment. I'll come back to this stuff in just a sec here. So we're looking at about, I just like ballparked 2,500 words or less. We don't need a super long thing. Most people don't write that much. Uh, there's no specific um, like genre or style that you have to do other than that your story reflects what we've looked at so far in our course, which I know has been really quick, but we have covered some ground in unit four, but also in that rules of creative writing slide deck. Um, and of course, this is again just your opportunity to practice those things, not to show that you've somehow mastered them in like the 48 hours it's been since we started. Um, uh, so a couple of things then about the, the grading. I've mentioned before that I really don't grade your, your, uh, your um, short story on how perfect it is as a short story, which is hopefully good news. So if people are a little nervous because they haven't written something like this, ever or for a long time. It's not really a course about how great a writer you are. It's a course about improving your writing, uh, getting better at revising, getting better at noticing strengths and weaknesses in others' work, but fundamentally in your own as a result of that, and they're being able to uh, improve. So the idea that you're bringing in, the, the, the story you're bringing into the workshop here should be relatively complete. You should have edited for basic grammar and typos within the time frame that we've got here. So you don't want to write half a story and then tell your workshop group, oh, I need an ending. That's not how a workshop works. Uh, even if you just have to make an ending just to complete the story, you might know that it's weak and needs work, but at least you've done a bit of work to get something in place. So the story should be complete. But the whole purpose of the workshop is to get feedback on a story that is a work in progress. So you don't want to take a story, maybe you've written one a while ago and you're like, oh, I'll just use that. Unless you're open to making substantial changes to it, right, which is the purpose of the workshop, getting feedback so you can do successful revision, um, there's no point in submitting it for workshop. So even if you think it's a great short story, it's really well written, I'll get a good grade because it's so well written. Remember, the grading doesn't really work that way. And in fact, it sort of defeats the purpose. So what you want to bring in is a complete story, but one that's still 
needs work or that you're open to making changes to because the whole idea is that you're going to get feedback returned to you that you could theoretically right um, do revisions on so the the story should be complete but don't feel like it needs to be polished or perfect or your grade depends on right how great the story is I get the context of what we're working in here okay so that's kind of the grading piece and the the scope of what you're responsible for the um, discussion board here where we exchange is here you'll find yourself in a group I can't quite capture that in my screen here so the workshops then um, it's a good idea maybe to review how the workshops work right before we get too deep into it how to post again it's just a discussion board you'll find yourself in a group this is just a random other class list our actual groups are down here you'll see a thread created for your group so you don't really have to do anything except find your name and click into it and then you're going to want to attach a file right if you've worked in word let's say which is pretty common for people or provide a link to a google doc which is my preferred word processor now because it's so great for collaborating and it's accessible across devices it's just really good um, and it's easy to comment on uh, right so and that's a thing we'll look at in just a sec but <clears throat> if you do the uh, Google Doc or any kind of shared platform make sure that it's open for editing so that people don't have to sign in in case folks don't have a Google account or whatever it might be the caveat though is if because it's open and you won't have to sign in if you do have a Google account you should sign in so that the comments you leave are automatically tagged to your name which makes it a lot easier for me to grade and if you don't and are in there commenting make sure that with each comment you add your name which is I know is a little bit tedious but otherwise it just shows up as anonymous and I don't know who gave the comment um, also if we were to look at let's say this is our discussion board if this is the group members URL that they've provided I'm gonna do my comments right in there and they'll see it automatically which is why it's nice and seamless but I as the commenter should also post to the discussion board or do a reply and repost the URL so when I see who's done how many posts it doesn't look like you've just done like one when you submitted your short story but nothing else and as if you didn't comment so it's hard for me to hunt through all the Google Docs to find which people have commented in which ones it gets really hairy um, so this is all explained right down here if it's not making a, a whole lot of sense right now but you'll hopefully see how it works as we go um, and if you run into troubles you can always ask me okay so one last note then how to provide feedback this is really the core of our class this is where the grading for the workshop happens uh, maybe surprisingly I don't know but it's really the quality of your feedback to others that that um, determines your grade for the workshop it's not the quality of your own writing although of course there needs to be some effort there but fundamentally what we're giving back to each of our group members is quality feedback so we want to comment on things that are working well we want to note things that are maybe weaknesses or things that we're confused about suggestions that we've had and so you can use a marginal commenting style here like is pictured notice that this is just one person commenting and we want them we want lots of comments in there it can't just be something right at the end or kind of one or two here and there it needs to be lots of stuff questions comments suggestions right whatever um, another possibility here if you don't like that marginal comment style is to do things right in the text but again use some sort of highlighting or color coding otherwise it's like really hard to see if it's just black and white stuff that kind of blends in with the text but we want it throughout 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 and I would even uh, kind of caution people not to just start reading and commenting but to read through once and then go back and provide comments so you don't really want to comment as a reader on your very first read through because it's if you find something that's confusing it's like half and half it could just be your first reading and you'd get it the second time so you provide a comment like oh I was really confused here so the writer's like hmm I wonder if it's confusing or if the writer or the reader just wasn't totally plugged into the story so we want to be fair to our group members and you'll notice the group members or the group numbers are pretty small so you just have a couple of stories to do so you really do want to invest the time read through go back and read again and then do your comments whether it's marginal like this within the text 
or in a, a Google uh, Drive or Google Docs situation where you have a comment, a marginal commenting feature. Uh, and the nice thing about that is that if I'm in a group with like, let's say three other people and I provide access to my Google Doc and everyone signs in or puts their name here, all of the comments will compile right there so I can see them as the writer, I can see them all at once, which is really great. Otherwise, I'd have three separate documents coming back from each of my readers and I'd have to sort of collate all those comments together to think about which ones I want to uh, make edits or revisions based on and which ones are just kind of more idiosyncratic. Just the one person had trouble, but the other two thought the ending was great, for example, right? Um, uh, I think that's it. I know that's the load. We move so fast I can barely keep up with the, the video work here. Um, Take one last look at our due dates. Oh yeah, the double due date system. Last thing. Okay, so our because the workshops are a little more involved, right? they spread out over a posting date. So your short story has to be posted no later than Monday, June 12th, right? Coming Monday. And then you have until that Wednesday to turn your feedback around. And again, our groups are pretty small. Um, so it's not a, a whole ton of people that you've got to work through but you do want to read each piece multiple times and not just jump in, comment, and then hope you kind of understood it and thus provided useful feedback. Once we wrap that up, we turn around to our next uh, uh, genre for our creative writing course, um, creative nonfiction. And again, like before, we do a couple units and then our next workshop, the same pattern sort of repeats and then you blink and, and we're done. Okay, kind of a long video, but lots to talk about. So as always, if you have questions, comments, um, be in touch with me, especially once we get here. I don't provide a ton of feedback, but I'm always open to connecting with you. Um, we can meet on campus, we can meet virtually. If you have specific questions, I'm more than happy to provide more specific, targeted, lengthy feedback if you're interested.